What's going on, everybody? This is Maximilian. We're returning to a, a bit of normalcy this time, as you can probably tell. Uh, the last video I put up was a bit different. Uh, I just figured, what the heck? Let's go out on a limb. We gotta do something special and epic, because after all, this was the Elite Four. So I just decided to do an off-the-cuff, incredibly ridiculous color commentary, which involved various, I guess, voices of several different characters. I mean, at one point, I was uh, Jeremy Clarkson, and then I think at another point, I was... E Probably Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think a Cookie Monster worked his way in there too. And oh gosh, I just couldn't keep a consistent voice throughout the entire thing. But it was ridiculous when I went back and actually listened to it. I thought, oh my goodness, this is this is just laughably awful. And um, the funny thing is, a lot of you actually liked it. I know some of you didn't, and that's okay. Like I don't actually plan on doing that on a consistent basis because, well, number one, that's not my style at all. I just felt like doing something really goofy. I'm not entirely sure what possessed me to do something like that, but. Nonetheless, I did it. So, yeah, one-time special treat for you guys, but don't expect too much more of that in the future. Well, maybe maybe one more time, but I don't know. I'm thinking we're going to have to put some space between that and um, the next time that I do it, because that was just... That was an absurdity of a commentary. <laughs> so, we're getting back to a normal pace here. Normal style, normal commentary, normal gameplay. And um, actually, we're joining in... Or, uh, not joining, jumping into the Kanto region today by way of the SS Aqua. Not the SS Anne anymore, which is kind of sad because I do like that retro feeling of being all the way on the SS Anne. I actually, um, I was watching the show back when they actually were on the SS Anne in the Pokemon series, so it's got, a, it's got a lot of nostalgic value for me. It's a darn shame that they had to change the name of the ship, but either way, we're going into Vermilion City which is kind of a weird place to start in Kanto, because you need to get to Cerulean somehow, and the only real way to do that is to go all the way up through, um, what's it? The, um, that long, giant path that goes all the way up there in the underground path. I'm not entirely sure how similar the Kanto region is to the red and blue versions, like if they kept it exactly the same, but I know for the most part it's very similar, so it'll be interesting going to places like Cerulean and Pewter, but I'm just excited to get back into the Kanto region because this is like red blue territory for me. So this is my this is my backyard. I know exactly what I'm doing in here, or at least I I think I do. I'm bringing some new friends to the party here. They guys have probably never seen the likes of a Typhlosion or a Lugia before, so they're in for a real surprise. Yeah, we're gonna shock the Kanto world with my amazing Elite Four party. Now speaking of which, uh, this party is going to be changing completely over the next couple of episodes or however long it takes for me to get through the Kanto region. And that is because you guys are going to be voting for an entirely new team that we're going to be facing Red with. Now, um, I may exert a little bit of executive authority here and keep Lugia in there, just because, you know, it's Lugia. But we want to try and get as diverse a party as possible and something that's completely different. At least from what I heard from you guys, you would like to see an entirely different party when we do eventually get to fighting Red. So I am going to start keeping up with the gym leader poll again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with the results that I had from the previous eight polls that I gave at each of the um, Johto gyms. And I'm just going to add on to the results of those current polls. So we're going to use the results from that one. However, um, you're no longer allowed to vote from anyone in this party. I guess that does include Lugia. Lugia is probably just going to be a, a game time decision. It's either going to be, well, I'll throw it in there because... I want to have Lugia in the party, or we're just going to keep it entirely different. So there's really no point for voting for Lugia. Basically, just vote for anybody that you don't see here. So none of the three starters, uh, which is kind of sad. I'm going to miss Typhlosion when we go against Red, because Typhlosion's awesome. And he single-handedly basically carried me through Red's party the first time I played Silver, because I didn't raise my party evenly. So my Typhlosion was like a level 87-something before like we actually got there. That made for a somewhat interesting battle, because the rest of my party was, like, level 40, so my rest of the party basically got ran over after the first Pokemon. They're like, alright, Typhlosion, time to carry the party, flamethrower him to death. That's basically what happened against Red. I somehow made it out alive, I have no idea how, but I did. This time we're going to be a bit more adequately prepared, and we're going to have an evenly leveled party. However, I'd like to get a feel for that party as soon as possible. So I'm going to do a bit of a premature poll here. I'm going to uh, go ahead and ask you guys, even though this isn't technically a gym that we're fighting at, we're going to go with um, an initial run-through of the poll. Vote for anybody that you would like to see in the red party. 
sans anyone that's currently here now. So no Meganium, no, Lu- no Lugia, no Typhlosion, no Feraligator, no Umbreon, and no Haunter. Those are the uh, only six you can't vote for, because, well, if you vote for them, I'm not going to count them anyway, because they won't be in the party. That's all I'm, I'm going to say. So maybe you could vote for someone like Ampharos. Uh, yeah, Ampharos is pretty cool. I know I'm kind of like you know, throwing my personal bias out there, but I'd like to see Ampharos in there. There are a couple other ones which were really close, but didn't quite make it. Uh, I think some of you were trying to get Espeon in there, and I'm not entirely sure I want to go through the process of getting another EV Evolve form via Happiness, because that Umbreon took freaking forever. And I know we have to go through another eight gyms in Kanto, but that's still not that much, because that's basically all there is to do in the Kanto region, it's just the gyms. It's not nearly as deep as the Ajoto region, as far as plot's concerned. So, that's just my suggestion. Uh, if you're going to vote for anybody, uh, I shouldn't say that, because last time I tried that, that didn't work out so well. I said, nobody vote for Lapras, and of course, all of you did. So, I'm going to... Um, Attempt a bit of reverse psychology in here and say, please, by all means, vote for Espeon. Ugh, I'm crossing my fingers here and hoping that works. But yeah, go ahead and leave a comment in this video and let me know who you would like to see in the Red Party. Now, I haven't uploaded in a couple of days, and that's because, well, I've been basically busy as I'll get out. Uh, I've had three exams this week. One of which was a standardized assessment test, which was kind of like a mini ACT or SAT. I'm not sure what kind of a standardized test you people, people take in the UK, but essentially here in the States, when um, you've entered your uh, sophomore year in college, you're supposed to take this exam called the STE, which is essentially just an assessment test to make sure that you've actually learned something in your general education courses. And... Um, Seeing as how I was in Hong Kong last semester, I didn't have an opportunity to take that. So I had to take it this semester, and I had to take it actually at, well, what is now two days ago, because I'm recording this at 3.30 in the morning. Please don't ask me why I'm up this late. I really don't know why. But uh, it was basically a waste of two and a half hours of my life, because it doesn't count towards anything in the near future. You're not really required to do well on it. Basically, the only incentive you have to do well is if you do poorly enough, or if you just bubble in random letters so that you essentially fail it, and they pull your test out because it's an anomaly, then you will have to retake it again, hence wasting another two hours of your life, and you will have to pay expenses. One, you'll have to pay for the test, which is not cheap, because apparently a packet of like eight pieces of paper costs like $40 or something, and you'll also have to pay the testing center for a proctor to actually sit there and stare at you while you take the test. And that's like another $25. So, essentially, they're saying, well, we have to waste two hours of your life, but please don't do bad, or it will cost you money and more of your precious time. So, yeah, a little bit annoying. I'm kind of upset about the whole process, but whatever. I just took it, and it was it was unbelievably easy. It was easier than college entrance exams, which is kind of surprising, which it kind of says a little bit about the educational standards are being held to today, but that's another topic for another day. So... On top of that, the other two exams I took were um, I had a macroeconomics exam, which was a joke because the um, while I don't really learn anything in macroeconomics, I basically just sit with my friends and play Scrabble on uh, his iPhone all day. Um, they don't change the tests at all going from semester to semester. They literally change nothing. Like the order of even the order of the questions in which they asked them was completely the same. So I'm pretty sure I got like a, a 95 or 97 on there. There were like one or two questions I blanked on. But basically all we did was we uh, grabbed an old test, we um, studied through the book and filled in the answers to that test, studied that test, and essentially got the same thing the next day. So it was incredibly easy. And the sad thing was the class average was somewhere in like the low 70s. And it's kind of hard to imagine why. I guess basically it's because they didn't know about it. Like, because... There's really no reason to ever get anything other than an A on that test. They don't change it at all. So I'm assuming that almost the entirety of the class had no idea that they could just, you know, look at it in an old exam and say, oh, well, sweet, here's the exam for tomorrow. So um, I'll be helping out some of my other friends in that class next time. I kind of completely forgot to run that by them. I was actually shocked a little bit because I was introduced to this uh, this fact about someone else. So I was a bit uh, secondhand on the knowledge, but... It worked out in the end, so that was all good. Then later that same day, after that macro recon exam, and this is all on like five hours of sleep, so by three o'clock in the day, I'm kind of dead. I have a physics exam at five o'clock, and this exam like really wasn't that difficult because 
I worked really hard through the first uh, unit of the course. I did all the homework problems. I turned everything in on time. Um, I have a solutions manual with me as well, so that way I can check to make sure that the work I'm doing is right. And it was just really easy, because I had done all the problems, I would practiced everything, I knew how everything worked, and I basically took the entire exam and like 30 of the 75 minutes you were allotted, and just spent 10 minutes looking it over to make sure I didn't do anything wrong. Sadly, I com- I made a really dumb mistake on one problem, and it was the only one I missed on the test. I got like a 96% on it. But in the middle of that exam, I, I, th- I thought I heard someone crying. and I had, no- I had no idea what it was at first. I figured, oh, it's just some random noise, so I'll keep going through the test. And eventually it kept going. It started getting louder, and then I realized, oh my gosh, there's a girl in front of me who is literally sitting there flipping through her test and just weeping out loud. And like I kind of caught a glimpse of her test and noticed that how like, it was almost entirely blank. I felt so bad for her because it does it does happen occasionally. You get test frustration. You have, you suddenly start to panic. You have no clue what you're doing. And this girl just lost it. Like she started bawling in the middle of the exam. Uh, the proctor had to help her out. It was kind of unfortunate, but I mean they do drop your lowest test grade. So fortunately, all is not over for her. Anyway, that's just my ramblings of what's been going on. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. I'll see you all soon.